one night the engines couldn't sleep. It was incredibly cold and incredibly windy. It's all right for you tank engines, Gordon sniffed. But we tender engines are too big and can't fit in the shed. We have to have our tenders in the shed to keep the coal dry. What we need, suggested Thomas, is a story. Yes, one about our railway, added Duck. We'll tell you a story from when we first arrived on the island, said Douglas. About the time you misplaced my special coach, asked Thomas. Aye, the very same, replied Donald. It all began around a week before the predicament with that stupid brake van and that silly signal box started Douglas. And this was the story that the twins told. We were in the workshop. The painters had put brand new numbers on our tenders, but had put no names or numbers on us. That meant we could swap our tenders. Just then the inspector arrived. Now then, nine and ten, smiled the inspector. Here's Duck. He'll show you around before you start work. The twins enjoyed themselves, and they were soon friends with Duck. We like it fine here, said Donald. That's good, smiled Duck, but take my tip. Watch out for Gordon, Henry and James. They're sure to try some nonsense. Don't worry, we'll soon settle them, said Douglas. Donald and Douglas had deep-toned whistles. They sound like buses, said Gordon. Or ships, sniggered Henry. Donald and Douglas cruised quietly up, one on each side. You wouldn't need be making fun of us now, would you? asked Donald. Henry and Gordon jumped. They glanced nervously from side to side. Uh, no, said Gordon. No, 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 certainly not, added Henry. That's fine, said Douglas. You mind you both keep it that way. And that was the way Gordon and Henry both kept it. Every day, punctually at 3.30, Gordon steams in with the express. It carries people from England, Wales and Scotland. There is also a special coach for people that want to go to places on Thomas's branch line. When the other empty coaches are taken away, the engines must remember to shunt this special coach onto the bay platform. It doesn't wait in the yard long. Thomas with Annie and Clarabelle rush from the junction to collect it. Thomas is very proud of his special coach. One day, Douglas helped Donald and Duck in the yard. Donald was only there because he was waiting for a goods train that he was to take to the other end of the line. Since Duck was busy arranging Donald's trucks, Douglas offered to help with Gordon's coaches. Douglas was enjoying himself until an awful thought struck him. I hope the fat controller doesn't realise I shouldn't be here, he said. I couldn't abide going back to Scotland. He worried so much over this that he forgot about Thomas's special coach. He put it with the others in the carriage siding. Then he went to talk to Donald. Soon Thomas came fussing. Where's my coach? he said. Coach? asked Donald. What coach? My special coach Gordon brings for me is gone. I must find it, I must, he said, and he bustled away. Lost six, exclaimed Douglas. I stalled the special coach with the others. Did you see that? exclaimed Donald's driver. A mob of angry passengers erupted from the siding. They're complaining to the fat controller. He'll be coming here next. No, listen, said Douglas's driver. We'll change tenders. Then away with you, Donald, and, and take young goods. Don't worry about us. Quick, no, do as I say. The fat controller approached, but Donald, with Douglas's tender, was away. Douglas and his driver waited with innocent expressions. Ah, number nine, said the fat controller. Why have you not taken the goods? My tender is away, said Douglas. The driver showed him the tender still uncoupled. Tell me, why did number ten leave so quickly? Maybe, said Douglas, he saw you coming 
I'd thought he might be late. Hmm, said the Fat Controller. The Fat Controller then turned to the passengers. Here are the facts, he said. Number 10 has been shunted in the yard, your coach disappears, and we investigate. Then number 10 uh, disappears too. You can draw your own conclusions. Please accept my apologies. The matter will be investigated. Good afternoon, gentlemen. The fat controller watched the, watched the passengers climb the station ramp. His, his shoulders twitched. He wiped his eyes. Douglas thought he might be crying, but he was not. He swung round. Douglas, he rapped. Why are you masquerading with Donald's tender? <laughs>